Okay, so today we are going to be computing with numbers in scientific notation and giving our answers in scientific notation, but we are going to be doing addition and subtraction. And it turns out adding and subtracting numbers in scientific notation is harder than doing multiplication and division. And the reason why is because when we're going to be adding two numbers in scientific notation, we can't add these unless they have the same powers of 10. So, in order for me to add these two together, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to change one of these so that the power of 10 matches the other one. And what the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to take the bigger one. I'm going to take this one. 8.67 times 10 to the 11th power, and I'm going to adjust this so it's going to be times 10 to the 10th power instead. And the way I'm going to do that is, since I'm supposed to move the decimal 11 places over, I'm actually going to just move it one place over to make it 86.7. So since I've already done one move out of the 11, that means I have 10 left. Does that make sense? So I moved that decimal over one place, and now because I've moved it over, I only have 10 more to go, so it's 10 to the 10th power. And now look, this and this, the two powers match up. So I can put my 9.5 times 10 to the 10th power underneath it. So now it's a lot easier to add up. Now when you add these, what we're going to do is we're going to add the coefficients together. 86.7 plus 9.5, which is 96.2. But the power of 10 is not going to change. And the reason why it's not going to change is it's a placeholder for the decimal. And when you add them together, the decimal place is not going to move everything's going to stay lined up in columns. You have to imagine adding decimals together. All right. So we end up getting 96.2 times 10 to the 10th power. And again, we want it in scientific notation, so we're going to have to adjust this back to scientific notation now. So I'm going to move that decimal over one place over to make this one step smaller. So if I make this one step smaller, I have to make the power of 10 one step bigger to compensate for it. There's my final answer. 9.62 times 10 to the 11th power. Okay? So it turns out subtracting is very similar to adding. Again, what we need is we need these power of 10s to match up. So this one has a 10 to the 10th power. This has 10 to the 8th power. Tell you what, I'm going to change this one to the 8th power. I'm going to move this decimal over two places to make this 736 times 10 to the 8th power. Because I've moved it over two places, I only have eight more steps left to move it. So I'm going from 10 to 8. Okay. Minus, I'm going to subtract this. And now that they have the same power of 10, I can actually subtract them. Okay. So I have 736 minus 2.3. And that gets us 733.7. And just like with adding, when you're subtracting scientific notation, that power of 10 stays the same. And now I have 733.7 times 10 to the 8th power. One last step. It's not in scientific notation, so I'm going to have to adjust it back to scientific notation. So I'm going to have to move the decimal two places this time to make it a number between 1 and 10. So it's 7.337 times 10. Now. Since I made this two steps smaller, I need to make the power of 10 two steps bigger to compensate for it. There's my final answer. 7.337 times 10 to the 10th power. So the key steps are, when you're adding or subtracting numbers in scientific notation, we have to have the same power of 10 before we can add them or subtract them. And then, remember, after you add the coefficients, the power of 10s don't change. They stay there. All right, and make sure your final answer gets adjusted back to scientific notation. Okay, so if you found this helpful, make sure you smash that like button. Also hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. I hope you have a great day with all of this, and good luck on your math.